Hi, I'm Noelle Stevenson. I'm the executive producer of She-Ra and the Princesses of Power, and I'm going to be drawing some characters from She-Ra today. So I am drawing a best friend squad. I'm drawing Adora, Glimmer, and Bo. They're sweet. I just love their friendship. They're just so close and open with each other, and that's really fun for me. It's funny. My art style is not the art style of the show, so I don't normally do a lot of drawing for the show, but um, I will do my best. So I started out, I actually went to art school, so I am an artist, um, but when I was pitching She-Ra, I sort of knew that I didn't want it to be in my own style, which tends to be a little simpler. For She-Ra, I wanted to try something a little bit different. I wanted it to be a more classic action-adventure look. So I worked with some other artists to develop the look of the show that felt a little bit more like a spiritual successor to the original She-Ra. So it was a very interesting challenge. I, I actually did sketches of the characters early on when I first pitched it, but mostly just to kind of show what I was thinking, how to like capture the character's personality. It ended up looking pretty different from the look we went for with the show, but um, I draw from time to time in the production, just mostly to sort of get my point across. Um, being a visual artist definitely helps with the production, but it's not something that you'll necessarily see in the show itself. The exception is sometimes when there's a little like crappy doodle in the show sometimes. That'll be mine if the characters ever draw like a silly drawing that gets posted on the wall. Sometimes that's actually my art, which is uh, a great just example of my uh, art school education for sure. I feel like my own art style has evolved working on the show, um, which is cool. I just kind of watch the way our designers and our board artists draw the characters and our animators draw the characters and I learn a lot from them. So there's one thing I've like never learned how to draw and that's actually Adora's sword. It's very hard. I think all the characters, they have like a little bit of me in them because that's just kind of how I write. I, I sort of draw from experience, but I also draw from like the people around me. So there's a lot of stuff like the characters, like sort of individual quirks. They're sort of based either on other people who work on the show or on people that I know elsewhere. So um, when I doodle, I tend to draw Dora a lot just because she's, you know, I like to draw her little hair poof and her, her ponytail. I don't think I made her poof high enough in this one, so. See, this is not a great sword, but it's fine. They don't pay me to draw swords. <laughs> I think when it comes to the characters that I relate to the most on the show, I relate to Adora a lot. Um, her sort of drive to be the best she can be and her constant anxiety that she's not doing it right, that's very relatable. And I also relate to Glimmer and Catra a lot. Those are the kind of characters that I think I, I relate to the most out of all the characters. And then someone like Bo, I'm like, oh, I wish I was more like Bo, he's so cool. I wish I could like rock a crap top like that. So when I draw something like this, I just kind of, I don't really know how it's going to come out, but I just try and uh, feel my way through it. I like to sort of just start putting shapes down and figure out how I want them to interact with each other. Like right now, I'm just trying to figure out how they're all going to fit together and how their individual shapes work. Definitely have uh, some episodes that I'm really proud of in the first season. I love Princess Prom, I love Promise. Those are the episodes that, you know, we sort of tried something with and I'm, I'm really proud of how they came out. Uh, but I always remember making the second episode because I felt like that was when things sort of started to come together. It's, you know, the first time you see these three together as friends because they've sort of been enemies before that. And so it was just something that it felt like, you know, with a pilot, you have so many things to consider. You're figuring out the characters for the first time, their voices, everything's kind of subject to change. Is this door's sword? Maybe, who knows. <laughs> Yeah, you go over everything so many times, and then it came to the second episode and I felt like something sort of fell into place. Like, it was exciting to sort of be like, here's the show, it's sort of theoretical, but um, it, it's starting to become real. And that was the episode that I sort of started to see that happen. One of my favorite things about being an artist, about being a storyteller in general, is uh, getting to build a world and inhabit it. And one of my favorite things about working in animation is that you share that world with other people. When I'm working on a graphic novel, 
a lot of it happens in your head. You are like, all right, I think this will work. And then you go and draw it, and either it works or it doesn't, but it's all sort of on you. Um, but when it comes to animation, you know, there are so many people involved with the process at every step. And that's something that I just really love because you think you know how something's going to turn out. And then someone, you know, comes in and they're like, I have this idea. I think this is how I want to try this. And you're like, all right, do it. Like, let's see how this goes. And then what you get is something that's like, you know, unexpected and and like cool and, and feels organic and feels alive and it feels like, oh, I would have never come up with this on my own. And that's just something that I love about doing this job, about making cartoons in general, is that it's something that just feels like you're kind of actually living in that world. It's been my favorite part, I think, about doing this job. Everyone brings so much creativity um, to the process and just getting to like, see bits of other people's vision in just every single part of the show, whether it's voice acting, design, editing, sound effects, all of those things that make a show what it is, make it unique. It's the people, that's what makes it special. And uh, I think that's what the show's kind of about, you know? It's about like, you know, no one can do this on their own. You need to work together. You need friendship, power of friendship. <laughs> I am very excited for the next season. I think we set up a lot of things in this first season. So much about this show is just the characters sort of becoming who they are or who they're going to be. So, you know, it's Adora figuring out how to be a hero. It's Katra becoming more of a villain. And also the power structures sort of change in the first season. Shadow Weaver is overthrown and the Princess Alliance comes together. We're going to sort of expand on that and we're gonna see the characters in more situations. We're gonna kind of push them to their limits in some ways, figure out what makes them who they are, what makes them the hero or the villain or the Princess Alliance. So there's new characters coming, some cool new mythology coming. It's gonna be fun. Obviously there's been a lot of discussion <laughs> around the uh, the redesigns of the characters and it's a uh, it's an interesting challenge sort of taking these characters and reimagining them the original was heightened but it was fairly realistic in the proportions and the way the characters faces were stylized um, and so when it came to sort of like all right we want this more expressive animation we want to try something that is take it in a little bit of a different direction how do you simplify the characters how do you stylize them what's the language and the vocabulary of the characters that you go to with that and it's interesting especially with a cast of mostly female characters because we're used to seeing female characters cartooned in a very specific way so you know have the fact that our characters don't have lipstick a lot of the time like it's like well why do we feel like a female character doesn't look like a female character unless they have lipstick how do we develop a visual language for our characters that lets them all be really distinct from each other really expressive um, and we also ask questions you know about what makes a female character recognizable and what makes her expressive and what makes her who she is like why do we expect certain things from the animation so i think we have gotten so used to seeing uh, characters stylized in a certain way that i think it really leaves a lot to play with and to experiment with and to find something that feels new and that feels exciting um, about creating this world and this style I think this conversation is sort of happening all over animation, all over media in general. It's like, what, what do you do when you start pushing at what makes a woman pretty? When does pretty get in the way of being expressive? When can a woman be goofy or exaggerated in some way? Do, do we have to prioritize the beauty? And you know, we love beauty. We're all about the glitter and the rainbows and the pretty ponies and all of that, but like it's also expanding what it means to be beautiful and what it means to be feminine even. We want the characters to feel very distinct from each other and feel very free in this world, like they can uh, present however they want, that they can wear whatever they want, and I hope we can contribute to that in a positive way because I think they're super cute. <laughs>
I think a lot of what we wanted to do with this show was sort of throw out a lot of ideas of what it meant to be a strong woman. I think when you have a series where there's maybe only one woman to a cast of mostly male characters or something like that, there's a lot of uh, anxiety, or there can be, about what makes a woman strong. And that affects not only her appearance, but also her personality. So um, what is the personality type of a strong woman? What can she like or not like? And that can be really stressful. You have to be careful about making sure you don't make like all women look bad because your character has a certain personality type. But when you have a cast of mostly women, you get to really experiment with what it means to be a hero, a villain, a friend, a support system, an antagonist, like all of these character types that we see from male characters all the time. We get to really experiment with that and really see how it feels when it's female characters, and that's, that's really exciting. All right, I am Noelle Stevenson, the executive producer of She-Ra and the Princesses of Power, and today I have drawn the Best Friend Squad for you.